Burn. 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 The oppressor personified. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious because he's like the sweetest human being who ever lived. You know, just like... We get on that ship and chances are we're never coming out. This is all when we don't trust each other and we don't know each other at this point. <laughs> I remember when we we were shooting this. I, it was something I was so excited about because I, you know, I'd been a fan of the books for so many years, and it was such. It's it is the it is the pivotal kind of domino from from the beginning that just sets off this enormous chain of events. My name is James Holden, speaking for the five survivors of the Canterbury. So this was like one of the first days where we were in the suits and we all realized how hot they were at this point. <laughs> just like sweating bullets. Yeah. We've now been sweating for six years in those suits afterwards. I actually love this scene because yeah. it demonstrates how each of the characters are always operating on what they think. <laughs> It's the right thing to do. Even as you go on in the series, we still kind of all stick to that in a way, in the kind of micro in the in the Rosie crew. It really yeah. does show that, doesn't it? I mean, like the yeah. the val the values of every person, and you really do see the dynamics very early on. It's such a trip to see. It's been a very long time since I've seen it? footage, yeah, from from this, and it's and it and it just makes me think of just how far this this crew has come i mean you know at, at this point in the story they really don't know each other at all and they're at each other's throats and to see where they start and to see all the growth individually and as a unit from here yeah. is such a trip to see should i smoke them we're dead anyway when i was casting for the role of naomi one of the things ty said to me was like we needed to make sure we had someone that could like stand up to Stephen straight in a scene and not like cower. And when we started filming these scenes, I was like, oh, this is why. Because <laughs> Naomi and Holden are just literally at heads, you know, for pretty much the whole of the first season. So yeah. I guess that was a really important characteristic for Naomi to have no problems there, do we, Steve? <laughs> nope, nope, none there. Well, I didn't have to kill you, brother. Me too. Gato, 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 gato. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. How bad could it be? Oh, oh, it's bad, huh? It's pretty, bad. pretty bad. There's <laughs> like no more secrets, but I've still got one. Whatever it is, we'll be yeah. all right. <laughs> Will we? <laughs> wow. I love, that yeah. scene. <laughs> I love how divisive that moment became not only between Naomi and Holden, but just in the Rosie crew. And then even when looking at how belters think um, their oppression should be dealt with, and especially with what is going on in the world today, like the expanse is so allegorical anyway, but just this really true moment of Naomi wanting better for her people. And I like this little bit of radicalism from her of trying to steal back power for her people, even at the cost of all of the relationships around her. And I I still watch it and I'm quite proud because I think it's a real moment of courage actually for her. I didn't destroy our sample. So it's such a pivotal moment for the for the family of the Rossi crew. I think I, I, on a certain level, Holden understands where she's coming from after she tells him. It's just the fact that she didn't tell him. And it's, and it's that internal betrayal that it's it's really i think within the whole framework of the series it's the closest that the family really comes to breaking apart yeah, um it's that choice for her of like do you kind of betray the the people you love or betray your people at large right. this is a trait of belters to put each other first and work together for the betterment and i i love that she done that like and it was just to try an, an attempt to even out the playing field using the tools that the earth used to oppress them. I think that's in her head. She felt that's the only way to do it. Earth has it, Mars has it, and the belt needs it too. Again, kudos to The Expanse, to the writers for dealing with these topics head on and then being able to reflect the world um, as a mirror back at, its, back at itself almost. I love that about this show. The other thing that I love about all of this as well is that, you know, who, no matter who it is and where they're coming from, 
everyone feels like they're doing the right thing. You know, it's like yeah. there is, yeah, and, and there's a point on every side. You know, you see it so uh, intimately within these two people um, who are both trying to do the right thing. And um, and, it, and it nearly tears them apart. Uh, I think it's a really powerful, powerful scene. Rosa. Oh, she was amazing. Oh, yeah. in this Rosa. Also, I've never found a spaceship landing so pretty before in my life. <laughs> Beautifully this done. Moment is amazing. Do you remember rehearsing this, Dom? Yes. <laughs> 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 we were rehearsing it in the hallway in my building. Yeah, I was like, this is stupid. I can't imagine what this is like. I didn't realize this would be such a tender moment. And I think that's why I didn't really give it much, like, I didn't have much time for rehearsals with this. It was like, right. she's just stepping out onto Earth. But the way it's all slowed down and the, the kind of um, navigation of everything that's hitting her, like the senses, the balance, the horizon, the, the sight, like that, I feel like you really get. And to think we were just in a green street, green screen studio is just like, yeah. lol. But I, I just, I love this like symbolism of like a rebirth as well. Yeah, for sure. Coming out of the confines of space and and what this means for all of us now. And the promise of what it could mean for not only just, you know, the Belters as a whole, but like for these two people, you know, like- These lovers. It is such an intimate moment between these two. And it also speaks to the fact that, you know, all of these, you know, thousand or so gates have opened up and all of this potential is out there. And the Belters, once again, for the for most of them, can't take advantage of it. And they're they're being cut out of it because they can't live in atmosphere. Many of them, you know, and it ends up playing a major piece in uh, in terms of the uh, the political dynamics going forward for for everybody. Even when you look at the way the belts are, like Naomi's always in this place, which also speaks to my own thing of being mixed race. Of like, are you for the belt? Are you a black? Per like, whose side are you on? When when you're part of both worlds and navigating that is a really beautiful thing. I've got to embody without it directly um, being about me being a mixed race black woman. And I think, you know, also too, it, it speaks to that, that, that amazing quality in the writing that there's no monoliths. You know, it's like there are differing opinions within every group in this show and all of them are justified. <laughs> everyone's flawed, everyone's gray, and you, you bounce in between who, who you like and who you don't like all the time. And I think sometimes we, when we talk about representation, we forget about the flawedness of humans, the fact that we don't just want to see a strong black woman trope. It's like, no, we want to see a black woman who is ripped from her family and um, is navigating that and has privilege and that makes wrong decisions and does the right thing. And you're still in love with her at the end of it. Because I think too often when, when we try to diversify in Hollywood or on shows, we try and portray the most wholesome version of that or the most palatable version of it and that's where you run into problems where I think what this show does is just give you humans flawed or everything out every step of the way no one's got it all the way together and I love that love that about it oh wow <laughs> you reveal <laughs> looks just like Naomi <laughs> it's so uncanny it's, it's such a trip Philip my son. Can we just give casting like? I, yeah, seriously, like a big round of applause because it, it like we're gonna, we're gonna have a son. <laughs> it would be just by like <laughs> when I met Josiah, I was like, who is this son of mine? <laughs> Where have you found it? And the way they chose to reveal um, that being Naomi's son and how he is so. Um, radicalized in a way and there's a really poignant line he says there this has always been a problem for our kind even our dreams are small like a lot of oppressed people cannot imagine a system outside of the one that they are oppressed by and i think you know say what you will about um marco i think a lot of people always want to paint him as the bad guy but when you actually look at the way the Belters are oppressed and what he is doing to alleviate that oppression, um, you're like, well, if I was a Belter, 
I don't know, maybe I'd want someone fighting for me like that. And I think, again, it's, it's a, always a question for me being a mixed race black woman within the black community, how do we alleviate our own oppression? Is it with radical measures? Is it with democratic measures? And I think what we get to see play out going into season five is the, the um, investigation of that. I think the response may be slightly different now to what it may have been two years ago. Oh. oh, I love this. It's so heartbreaking. He sings that song on the way out. The execution dock. I have come till he go. Oh. Wow. Burn, man. You know, just to speak to what the writers did with the adaptation of Ashford and what they did with David and collaborating with him to show this incredible journey of this man um, going from being a pirate to being kind of an institutional OPA guy um, and trying to push for the belt in, in the way that he felt was right, which just isn't, this doesn't jive with the, with the faction of the belt that is, that is coming into the fore. He was probably the Marco of his day. I always right. thought that like, he was probably the one who everyone thought was crazy radical. And, right. you know, I think it's quite sad when Marco says to Philip, is Clay's Ashford traitor to the belt? Because that's not his legacy. And I don't think that is ever the legacy he would have wanted to leave behind. But he's just dated, maybe, in his radicalization. And I love that play on it as well. Oh, I love this scene. This was a good one.